Brother David. I'm so grateful for Brother Bill standing in the gap. Amen. Aren't you? And for Miss Barbara playing the piano. And I am thankful that, that the Lord sent us Miss Barbara. Amen. Um, yeah, we, we, we had grown used to having Miss Beverly. Amen. And uh, she, she would play that piano. And boy, I tell you what, she could play it. And then she, she had to move up with her sister. And we were... We were we we had a we had a hole, but you know what God did? God knew we had a hole, and uh, and God sent us someone to fill that hole. Amen. I'm telling you, God's like that. I'll be honest with you, God's good. I mean, even 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 though that uh, you know we think that uh, well things are just not like you like what like we want it to be. You know things are never like we want it to be. And I just want you to realize that things are never going to be like you want it to be. It's never going to get there. You're never going to, you're never going to reach that plateau where you say, man, I made it now. It's not there. That, 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 is, that, is, that is a plateau that just don't exist. There's no place, oh, man, I made it now. I mean, even, uh, even the richest people in the world aren't happy. They're They're miserable. I mean, the the some of the some of the richest people in the world are the ones that commit suicide, and so money's not what money's not what makes happiness. But let me tell you what the Bible says. It says godliness with contentment is great gain. And I want to tell you that that right there is the key to living a life that's that that that's pleasing to you and to the Lord. Well, that's not the message. It's not. Now, we're in Matthew chapter number 5, and uh, I'm, I'm going to be brief tonight. I really am. I, I'm, I'm tired, and uh, you say, well, you're too young to get tired. I see Miss, Miss Edie over there giggling, me being tired. But I'm, I'm tired. I, I just got back from a grandbaby's birthday party. And boy, I'll tell you what, every one of them grandbabies wants you to push them in the swing. Can you put? I want. I want you to push me in the swing, so I don't mind. I I, I like doing it, but uh, I I want to uh, I, I I want to give you something, but I I'm not going to give you all that I got because really all that I've got is going to take more than the time that I really want that I feel like I can actually spend. That my voice ain't going to go out on me. But in Matthew chapter number five, verse number twenty-one, is where we'll, we're we're going to take up and and read. And I want you to listen to what it says. We're going to read through verse number twenty-six, and then we'll pray and and see what the Lord has for us. It says, "Ye have heard that it had been said by by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall." Uh, shall kill, shall be in danger of judgment. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without cause shall be in danger of judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say thou fool shall be danger of hell's fire. Let's pray. Father, I do thank you so much for your good grace and mercy. And I ask, Lord, that you would help us as we look into these verses. I pray that you would, uh, Lord, that you'd give me remembrance and, and clarity of thought. And, Lord, that we'll be able to just glean some things tonight uh, in thy word. And, Lord, uh, our desire is to serve you and for your will to be done. I do humble myself before you, realizing who I am and, and the, the frailty of my, my own body and my own life. And Lord, I ask that you would bless and have your will. We love you and thank you for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to, I only read the verse 22, but I want to read the rest of, uh, down to verse number 26 also. It says, therefore... If thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother has ought against thee, 
Leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Agree with thy adversary quickly while thou art in the way with him. Least at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and the officer casteth cast into prison. Verily I say unto thee, Thou shalt by no means come out thence till thou hast paid the uttermost farthing. We have before us here uh, some scripture by which uh, it, 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 it fits in what we've been studying. But if you remember back, the very last verse, verse number 20, that Jesus is teaching and he is looking to, to reveal some things in the lives of the, of the Pharisees and scribes. His, his desire is to... to open them up and to examine them to the place where they see themselves. Because if you remember in verse number 20, he said, Except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees and scribes, you shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. And here he goes directly into what the Old Testament says. Well, we know that that this is a, a verse that's found in, in, uh, Exodus, in Exodus chapter number 20, where God gives the great uh, discord of the Ten Commandments there. And one of them is, Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. And truly, we live in a world that murder is, is rampant. And not just murder by which we hear on the, on the TV, or, but suicides, abortions. I mean, all this is happening all around. I mean, we're talking millions of, of, uh, of murders that, that take place on a daily basis probably across the world. And yet, the Lord here is reflecting in this right here to, to examine those Pharisees and scribes openly to be able to reveal something to them. See, it was through the law that the Pharisees and scribes found their righteousness. I mean, uh, uh, their characteristic was that, that I, I'm not in the same character that that of a murderer. I mean, most of us here would declare ourselves in that same view, that I'm not like those that are on death row that have murdered people. I'm not of that, that cut from that cloth. But the truth is, <laughs> the truth is that we're all sinners. And because we're all sinners, you know that each one of us have a capability of doing anything. And we need to realize that in our lives. But the Ten Commandments isn't the only thing the Old Testament tells us about murder. I mean, we go all the way back to Genesis chapter number 9, where we find the first murder that takes place. And there Cain is confronted to, about, to God and says that, that uh, the, the, the shed blood of his brother is calling out to him. Verse number 6 it says this right here. It says, Whosoever sheddeth man's blood, by man's blood, I mean, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. I mean, this is the this right here is capital punishment that God has set in effect. That if man die, uh, if if man kills somebody, then that man is to die by the hand of man. I mean, that is. That, that is that is biblical capital punishment, and it should be it, it should be taking place in our society. There's there's a reason why is because we are created in the image of God. 
And therefore, when murder takes place, in, in essence, it is a reflected uh, act against the image of God in itself. So the Bible tells us a lot more about murder. And here Jesus is speaking to these that say to themselves that we're righteous because we keep the law. But the truth is, when he says these words in verse number 21, Listen to what he says. He says, you have heard that it is it was said by them of old, old times. He's, he, he's not referring to the Ten Commandments about which was given to Moses, but he is referring to them, them. The them here is the rabbis by which had passed on their teaching to to those students by which told them that thou shalt not kill. Do you remember in the, in the book of Nehemiah and also Ezra when, when they came out of captivity? You remember when they came out of the captivity? And uh, there in the, the book of, uh, I believe it's Nehemiah chapter number 8, they, they, they found the book and they opened it up and they, they started to read it. And when they read it, they had to explain it to them. Why? It's because they came to the place where they could no longer understand the language by which it was written in. They could no longer understand what, what had been written in the, in the words that were given because they had spent so much time in captivity that their language was no more that of their native tongue. So throughout history, from that point on, the rabbis and the scribes and the Pharisees, they would be the teachers and they would take the, the laws of God and they would, they would tell the people what they said and what they meant because they couldn't understand them. Uh, we we uh, pick up pe uh, kids that uh, attend school here in the United States and go to you know, school in the speak English, but their parents speak a different language. And uh, I, I'll ask them, I said, uh, do you speak that language? They said, no, I don't speak that language. He said, I can understand what they're saying, but I can't speak it. They're, they've lost that, that form of communication, and that's exactly what took place in the, the, the time of captivity. And because of that, the Pharisees and scribes were hanging on to the teaching of the traditions of what had been said drip down to the place where it's been taught, this is what it means. And he said to them, Thou hast heard of, of them of old times. The, re, the ritual sect by which had passed down all the, those laws He said that whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of judgment. And truly, the, the Pharisees and scribes, they'd stand around and they'd say, we're not murderers. We're not even in that classification. I mean, we're better than that. I mean, like I said in the beginning, we would also put ourselves in that category. I would never kill anybody. I would never, I'd never harm anybody, really. I often thought to myself, what would happen if someone broke into my house? And what would happen if, uh, would I be able to actually take somebody's life? Which I believe the Bible gives us clear understanding in the, in the Old Testament of, of the way that we're to be able to protect ourselves and that we're to be those that protect our family. And I don't believe that God holds us accountable to the place of taking someone's life in offense and defending ourselves. Nor do I believe that if we're at war against another nation, I believe that God uh, has also made uh, 
um, reference of in the word of God that if we're at war against another nation that, that we're not held accountable for murder because it's a just war. But here our Lord brings them to a place that they can agree on what he is saying. He says, you have heard that it was said from them of old times that thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in judgment, shall be in danger of the judgment. And I can almost hear all those scribes and Pharisees say, that's right, that's right, yeah. We agree with that. We've never murdered anybody. We're righteous. We uphold the law of God. But then it comes to verse number 22. In verse number 22, you can say that this is where he really sets down the plow. If you, if you understand the, the terminology, the old preachers of old, what they would do is they would, they, would, they would call preaching plowing the ground. And they would take and they would set that plow down deep. I don't know if you've ever plowed with a plow before. But number one is when, when you go to plow, that, uh, that, you know, according to what type of plow you've got, you don't, you, don't, you don't go to hard ground and you just start tearing it up because, boy, it's a hard, hard thing. But he sets that plow deep in verse number 22. He sets the plow deep and he, he says to him, he says, and I say unto you that that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council. And whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hell's fire. He he brings him to another place. He said, I want you to see here that, that you're not interpreting or the, the law has not been interpreted all the way correctly to you. See, murder is not just, not just killing someone. Murder is having anger towards someone in your heart. Boy, that's a tough thing right there. I think throughout my lifetime and, and uh, the times that I've been done wrong and how hard it is to overcome anger. I mean, I, I had, uh, I had a, 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 someone that was as close to me as a brother hurt me to a place that, that I thought that I would never be able to forgive him. And I would wrestle with that. Because of the fact that I knew that anger was, was as much a crime as someone committing murder. See, we don't think of it that way. It's okay to be angry at them. We just need to be angry at them and sin not. The problem is that we don't... Our judgment in anger is, is not that which can determine what's sin and what's not. I believe there is an anger that we can have this righteous anger when it's against the things that are against God. And that's a righteous anger for us to have. But for us to har harvest anger within ourselves brings us to a place where we endanger our own bodies. Because, my friend, I want you to know that anger eats like a canker. We must come to the place where, where, where anger is not something that we, uh, that we give place to. That we, because of its vast 
likeness Jesus gives it to, that of murder. He doesn't only say that, that it's like murder. He says it deserves the same punishment as murder. That's difficult for us. It's difficult for us to let go, to not have grudges, to not hold them against people. I mean, I can almost guarantee you everyone that's sitting in this auditorium has someone that's flashing in their mind right now by who they, they had been angry with. Or somebody that you might be angry with even now that you never got over or never asked forgiveness. See, if you keep on reading the verses, you'll find out that when we, we realize that we have that anger in our heart and, and we're at the altar with our gift, and our gift is not for that person, but it is to God. He says we're to leave that gift and go to that person and, get, and make it right. That's how important it is. That's how, that's how urgent it is that we deal with anger in our lives. That we don't let it become something that we just pretend is okay. Have you ever did that? Just, I'm just going to pretend everything's okay as long as I'm around that person. But when I'm not around them, I don't like them. And I tell you, that's not, what, that's not what Jesus wants us to do. See, he was trying to bring the Pharisees and scribes to a place where they, they could see that in their lives they were just as guilty as murder because they had anger. And having anger made them unrighteous. And they were just like that group by which they declared themselves not to be a part of. It was so easy for us. And I want you to see here that, that, that he does not just focus in a sect, but he brings it into a family familiar setting. He says to him with his brother, He, he, he don't say with a stranger. He brings it to a place that we're as close to us with your brother. What a generic term that's used here. It, it can mean any, anything, really. It, it, could, it can mean that of, a, of someone of the, uh, that's born in the same country as you are. It could mean someone that is of relationship to you. It can mean someone that you're in, in, in the Christian fellowship, but we know that it's not talking about Christian fellowship here because the church hasn't even been established. But it could still contain to that. He, he wants us to see the, how grievous and important it is that we let this not become something in our life. that it holds such a great danger. I, I wanted tonight to look at the, the three things that, that, uh, that he reveals happens to those that have it. He says, he says in verse number 22, he says, without cause, the, uh, I'm sorry, whosoever is angry with his brother without cause shall be in danger of judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council. And whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hell's fire. Now he gives these three, three levels of, of, uh, of conviction by which is in the process. But I'm not going to cover that tonight because I really don't have time. I, 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 it, it, it's going to take a little bit of covering to be able to make it clear 
But what I want to establish in our minds tonight is this right here, that, that Jesus is trying to get the Pharisees and the scribes to see that anger is equal in all cases in punishment and penalty as murder. And we need to realize that today, in the day that we're living in. Because can I tell you, it's easy for us to fly off the handle. It's easy for us to lose our temper. It's easy for us to get frustrated. I mean, I'm just going to be honest with you. Uh, you know, I can be sitting there talking to Miss Denise, and she can say something to me, and, and what she says isn't mean, but it sort of ruffles my feathers a little bit. And, she, and I said, well, I, I want you to know when I heard that, this is what I heard. And she said, well, when I said that, that ain't what I said. That's, I mean, that's, that's the kind of hearing we have. I was watching, um, I, I, I like, a, uh, I like a, a show, it's called Last Man Standing. It's not a very good show, to be honest with you, but I like it. It's, a, it's sort of like a modern day version of Andy Griffith. But uh, he was on there and he said, he said to his dad that, uh, that, that you're a lazy parent. And his dad, he, his dad heard, uh, I, I wasn't a good parent. He, was a la he called him a lazy parent because he spanked him. Well, they went to work the next day and he was talking to his partner and he said, he said, me and my father, we had a, we had a, 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 a bad disagreement, and I think I offended him. He said, what would you say? He said, I said that he was, a, he was a lazy parent, so you said that he was a no-good-for-nothing parent. He said, that ain't what I said. He said, that's what I heard. He said, but you heard me wrong. He said, now you're saying that I'm a senile old man. He said, that ain't what I said. He said, that's what I heard. See, that's the way we are. We, we don't realize that the things that are making us mad might not be what's actually being said. It's just what we're hearing. And sometimes our hearing may be wrong. We must come into our life where we realize that, that when we feel that anger coming on us, we have to do something about it because of the fact of the, the grave penalty that comes along with it. That it is, it is like murder. It holds the equal judgment of such. And that is what he is trying to teach the Pharisees and scribes. Now, next week, we're going to look at those three things. And we're going to see just exactly what they mean in the judgment and how they apply in the time of Jesus at that, as he gave them out. Let's stand together and we'll pray. Father, I love you and thank you for all that you do, for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. And Lord, once again, I, I thank you for your word that it's, that it's as live today as it was the day that you spoke it. And Lord, I pray that you would help us Help us to see it, heed to it, and live it. Lord, give us grace. I'm not trying to say that, that, that I'm more than anybody else or, or less than anybody else, but Lord, I need to have this in my life as much as any other person does. And Lord, I pray that you would reveal it and that you would... Uh, help me to execute it in my life. I love you and thank you for all that you do for us. And I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother, Brother Bill, what we're going to sing? 385 in your hymn books. 385.
Jesus and be always pure and good? Would you walk with him within the narrow road? Would you have him bear your burden, carry all your load? Let him have his way with thee. His power can make you what you ought to be. His blood can cleanse your heart and make you free. His love can fill your soul and you will see. For let me have his way with thee. Amen. Well, I want to invite you to be back on Wednesday night. We're going to be finishing up the book of Acts, uh, Exodus, I mean, uh, Genesis and going into Exodus. And what a wonderful time that's going to be. I'm, I am looking forward to it. It's been a great study. I hope you haven't missed it. I hope that if you have, that, that you're looking at it online because it's online and you can, you can go through it and uh, study it and have a great time. Amen? Amen. Well, until then, may the Lord bless you. Shake hands with one another, and you're dismissed. Mm -hmm.